Hi guys, uh, welcome back to Miscellaneous Pleasures. Uh, it has been a long, long time since I last recorded. Uh, I've just been busy and, you know, it's 2021 and the last time I recorded it was still 2020. So, Happy New Year to all of you. Have a brilliant 2021 and let's all hope that 2021 brings all the happiness and positivity and all those things that 2020 lacked and more so on that note uh this is a football video this is me talking about essentially what has happened since the last time i recorded and the last time i recorded it, it was the manchester derby stalemate uh quite a tactical boring not boring but you know tactical game with very few chances and since then united have played very well uh to some people they have played much better than they expected for me perhaps they have gotten a couple of more points than i expected them to uh, i mean the idea that they have won four and drawn one in the last five premier league games i mean that's 13 points from a possible 15 so that's fantastic and you know i mean in that note i guess i should begin the display because what else is the point um yeah so we obviously drew against city nilal and since then we've beaten uh sheffield united i mean it, the, sh the score says 3-2 and most of these games it has sort of been a situation where you know we have beaten sheffield 3-2 lead 6-2 uh leicester we obviously drew 2-1 and then the Wolves game we won one nil, and the Villa game we have won two one. Uh, Scoreline wise, maybe you know we have obviously won them and played well, but there have been moments in all these games. Perhaps not the Leeds United one, but the other games where United have looked like the game could slip away from them, or at least towards a lost point sort of a scenario. Maybe not a loss in itself, but maybe a draw, and you know credit has to be given and also a precaution has to be kept in mind not a precaution but more like a, a thing to keep in mind it's that united have done well to win the games that they have won from perhaps situations where they would have drawn last season or maybe they would have been expected to draw this season uh so that's a good thing but then the fact the idea that we did get to those situations in itself is isn't worrying but it's more like you know it's just sort of a reminder that at any moment at any game it could potentially it could potentially be the game that united don't get the points that they have done till now so i mean the next couple of pictures are the Carabao cup semi final and the fa cup so I'm not really prioritizing them per se. I mean, obviously we have to win them both. And if we lose even one of them, it would slightly be a hard knock on the confidence and the momentum that we have generated. But the most important game for me is the Burnley one and obviously next uh, the Liverpool one because the Burnley for the reason that it was around this time last year where we played Burnley and we lost. I think we lost 2-0 or 2-1 or something. And it was also the same time of the year last year where we played Liverpool and we lost to them too. So these two fixtures sort of repeating themselves from last year to now at similar times. And I mean the Liverpool one, I mean, if we happen to win the Burnley one and if Liverpool win their games too, that they have, I mean, they have just one, I think. Uh, yeah, they have the Southampton one coming up and I think they have like, who do they have? Let's see. So they directly have us. Okay. So yeah, so they play Southampton and then they obviously directly have us. I'm sure that they have an FA Cup picture somewhere in the middle. So, you know, if they win their games and we win against Burnley, we would be level on points going into that game as number one and number two placed side and that is exciting but 
and that's obviously that obviously means that it's a must win fixture and this another thing to remember is that we haven't actually played liverpool yet this season even though it has almost been half a season completed so there's obviously the reverse fixture that will be there uh, at our home so that's also something to look forward to but the point i was trying to make is Burnley is the sort of game that United drew or dropped points last season, and even though this season we have an excellent record against these so-called smaller teams or the rest of the league apart from the big six, and if we could maintain that against Burnley, then that will be really, really appreciative and sort of, you know, the thing is United fans who who are skeptical. skeptical about the side they are skeptical because united haven't been able to give that sort of a confidence to the fans and these results that we have accumulated this season they aren't really special to be honest because you know you may say that you know what united are top of the league and in some people's eyes they are joint top of the league even though i don't think so because we are still behind on goal difference and so you know that's not something that people would have expected at the beginning of the season or even uh, about 2 to 1 and a half months ago when we were down in the table per se even though we had a game in hand which we still do uh the fact of the matter is the amount of points that we have accumulated from 16 games to the 33 is sort of the position that i did expect us to be in at the start of the season i mean i obviously said that united have to get 80 points this season that's what sort of goal i had set and 76 was sort of the bare minimum so that's essentially two points per game and it is still the average that we are maintaining now so i'm not too excited about this simply because i expected this sort of a point return what i did not expect was teams like liverpool also having the same return of points I expect them to be around thirty-nine, forty sort of mark, and obviously City having played uh, another game less than us or less than they have to play two games less than rest of the league, and they have played one less than us because of the COVID fixture that just got postponed. So because of that, they obviously if they win, they would also be in the thirty-two point range and from sixteen. which is not somewhere that i expected city to be in i expected them to be around 35 36 so even though the amount of points that i expected united to get was the same or similar to what has happened in real the position is something that is really really exciting and that is probably why there are not a lot of people who are ex- uh, expecting united to win the league because mm-hmm. maybe the thought process doesn't go the same way that in terms of points and averages numbers at the way my mind goes but this is essentially what you know they are feeling and that makes sense so having said all these uh, that's why i think this burnley game is going to be crucial because if we do win that then that sort of changes perspective slightly because again okay, numbers I do love numbers, and I'm going to throw one more into this video. Uh, 16 games, 33 points. That is 10 wins, three draws, and three losses. United were a side that played really well against the big six last season. Like you know, we beat City twice, we beat Chelsea twice, we drew and won. So we got four points from Spurs, and obviously we you know. drew and lost against arsenal and drew and lost against liverpool but then we also beat leicester twice and then we had like good results similarly against the big sides and stuff like that but what has happened this season is that against the big sides we have played four games spurs arsenal chelsea and man city we have drawn two and we have lost two and the teams that we have lost to is arsenal not something you would want to do at this point of in this season because you know they are reeling in the 11th position have actually played a game less than us they have about 10 points less than us so that's the sort of season that they have been having and spurs we lost 6-1 so we just got absolutely drowned and battered that day so four games 
two points. But then if you take into account the rest of the games that we have played in the league, we have 12 games and 31 points, which is 10 wins and a draw and a loss. The loss being the first game of the season against Palace. So against the so-called rest of the league or the teams that are not part of the big six, we have actually played really well. And that gives me confidence because when I predicted a similar sort of a point return after 16 games, I predicted it because I thought you would, you know, United by this time would have probably lost a couple more games against the lower sides and probably gained a few more points against the bigger sides, which hasn't happened. So, you know, it's, it's obviously an unpredictable season and, you know, anybody claiming to predict everything perfectly, it's never going to happen. Uh, it's similar to my case and I, you know, I'm confident of the Burnley game, but then it's two games away rather the third game from now because we still have two cup games and the momentum that we generate or lose from those two games is also obviously going to affect the Burnley game because you know, if, if we happen to let's say lose against City and then win like unconvincingly against Watford then that's the sort of mindset the fans and you know the media the players will be in when playing the Burnley game and if Burnley which who to be honest when they play well against the big side it's really difficult to beat them and your players have to perform at a much higher level than they would normally have to and at the end of the day this is the Premier League so you have to obviously play the best that you can so I'm confident but you know it's sort of a it's a weird season, so at this point of time, it's not even you know certain that we are going to play Burnley on that date because you know anything can happen in the next ten days, and you could. It's a very realistic chance that United or Burnley's players will either contract COVID or come into contact with other people, other side, which could have had COVID. So. No fixture is currently safe and it's not a certainty that we are going to play Burnley but under the assumption that we are going to play them at that date it's it's going to be interesting and it's actually a very I mean I'm not going to get into the Cavani thing but the one thing that I would say which is not really relevant to that particular situation but then the effect of that situation is that because this Burnley fixture got placed on well, on 13th, we are playing them on 12th, right? Yeah, we are playing on, yeah, we are playing them on 12th, 13th in Indian Standard Time. So, because this Burnley fixture has come in between, what that has meant is Cavani is actually going to be available for the Liverpool game. Because if he was banned for three games and Burnley game wasn't present, then he wouldn't have been avail available for the Liverpool game, which I am happy that that hasn't happened so you know but then i mean i don't want to make any comments on it because uh, my views are pretty simple on that and if i were to speak let's say 15 seconds about it i would say that you know racism is sort of a thing that it, it, it's a big situation around the world and yes punishments are important yes uh you know you have to as a from Cavani's perspective, he should have realized that this is the sort of thing that would happen if he said the things that he did say, which he didn't necessarily say anything offensive. But then, it, for the people who don't understand the conversation that he was having, that was offensive. And that's the problem because, should it matter? Probably not, because he's not talking to a person who's going to get offended by that word. But then, you know, in a social media sort of a place, it's not a private chat, it's a social media, which means if he puts on a com if he puts a comment or a reply or a retweet or whatever, then that's for the public to see. So that's one perspective, right? And the second perspective is that at the end of the day, the word that he used to the person that he did use it to, none of them are English they it wasn't used in that context and that actually doesn't mean what you know 
what could be interpreted in England. So that was that is not what was meant, which means that if you're going to charge Kavani with racism and you know, three match ban and a fine of I don't know what the fine was, but some amount of money, then what you're essentially saying is that we are not inclusive to the people who are not English or who don't have a European sort of origin, who are from a completely different background. And that essentially means that you're disregarding that culture within your own confinement. And, you know, as I said, using the word in a public forum, a social media forum, is not correct. Regardless of how it was supposed to be uh, understood or how it was supposed to be interpreted, but when you're going to use it in a social media platform, it can be interpreted in many different ways. That's the whole point. So, you know, as I said, I'm actually, you know, I'm kind of happy that United have just, United and Kavani have just, you know, accepted the charges and they're not actually, you know, gone after and counter case or whatever it, they could have done, which has meant that this thing is just over now. Let's just get it over with three games, fine, take the ban, understand the consequences of your actions and just move on because you know I'm, I'm happy that they did not do the you know you know what they're going to appeal the decision and stuff like that and should have extended the whole thing and it, it would have just caused a certain debate around the club that is not necessarily required in the situation that we are in because at the end of the day something that has to be understood is that after seven and a half years United are finally in a proper title challenge. They are potentially placed perfectly for a title challenge. And no amount of distraction is in no amount of distraction is required to derail this challenge. And you know, I mean that's it. Uh, and uh, another thing that I do want to say is that punishments is one thing. But then educating the people is another. Like, yes, maybe from your perspective, Kavani did make a mistake. And, you know, because from your perspective, he has made a mistake, you have given him the punishment that you have. At what point of time are you going to realize that maybe educating the people? I mean, you know, yeah, so. That's something that uh, people in authoritative positions have to recognize, and that is that. Um, yeah, getting back to football. Uh, I mean, I have just talked about Manchester United for this whole amount of time, and I have done that for 18 minutes. So, talking of, I mean, I mean, United have played five Premier League games in the time that I have not made videos. But what has also happened is other teams have played five games, four games, six games, depending on when I did the recording. And what that has meant is that in the same time, Liverpool have actually drawn to West Brom, uh, sorry, West Bromwich, they have drawn to Fulham, they have drawn to, they drew to somebody else too. Yeah, they drew to Brighton and I think, no, no, the Brighton game was a long time ago. Yeah, so they did drew to Fulham and West Brom, and they obviously got the win against Spurs, which I mean, I don't think Liverpool or Spurs deserved to win that game. I think you know, last minute winner Liverpool was shouldn't be very happy with that result, and they were, and they obviously demolished Palace seven nil. Yeah, this is what I'm wondering. They drew to Newcastle. That's what I forgot. So. They have drawn three games in the five that they have played, and because of that, United are currently level on points with them. And I think before that, they were, I think, like four points. Yeah, they were four points behind Liverpool, and now they are equal. So, you know, I, I hope the Southampton like draw or something because that would be fun going into Anfield because, you know. I usually have this theory that, you know, if there are two teams who are going to be battling out for the title, then it's not that bad of a result for either of them to draw against the other away. 
if you can draw away and manage to win your home game against them, that's a good thing. Because you can't be obviously expecting to beat. You can't be expected to beat everybody and you can't obviously be expected to beat your your title challenge rival or title challenger or whatever you want to call it. Both games. So, so for me personally, I think a draw at Anfield is not the worst result. But then, you know, another thing to remember is that it's not likely that United are going to win against Liverpool at home because I mean, it's not like a given. So, having considered that, I would want other teams to derail Liverpool as much as they can because I know for a fact that United are not going to get 86 87 points this season. So, it would be beneficial if other teams manage to keep Liverpool to about 80 82. And then, if United don't get 82, and let's say Liverpool win the title with 82 points, then that's an opportunity lost to not just United, but to teams like Leicester, Aston Villa, I don't know if, how much points Aston Villa are going to get. So that's obviously a, an opportunity drop for teams like at least Spurs, United, Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal. I mean, even though Arsenal are reeling down at the bottom, and 82 points is not something that they can probably get because that's 59 away. And if they are to get 82, they would have to win 19 of their next 21 games win 20. But that's not happening. So, um, you know, I would definitely want Southampton to IT. I, I mean, I can't expect Southampton to beat Liverpool, but if they can manage to draw, that would be wonderful. Uh, are there any other title challengers? Man City definitely, because, you know, they have two games in hand and they can get to 32 the same amount of games played, which is just one point away, so they're definitely in the title challenge. Uh, Spurs, yes, I wouldn't discount Spurs because in a season like this, what you probably need to maintain a title challenge is just a small amount of consecutive wins. What I mean by that is, generally you would, if you're a challenger, you would have a situation where you would have to win like 9 out of 12 games and then draw two, loss, lose one or something like that. But then in a season like this, United have won four out of the last five games and they're suddenly talked about as title challengers. Five games ago, when they drew to City, nobody was doing that. And at that time, actually, they were talking of Spurs to probably win the league. I was talking of Spurs to win the league. And they obviously lost to Leicester and Liverpool and that hasn't helped their causes. Obviously, it draws too. Haven't helped them, so four points is not really that big of a deal. It's a big of a deal if you are Jose because Jose has this tendency to shut up shop when they are winning one nil, and it has happened a couple of times before the season for Spurs where they have won, they have been winning one nil, and then suddenly the opposition scores from a free kick or a corner or just a scrappy goal or just a beautiful goal, whatever. And the game has finished 1-1 and after they get their first goal, they don't actually do anything to get the second. More often than not, and that's something that he did with United as well. So, that's probably one of the reasons that they may not win this league and they may fall short. But that doesn't mean that they are not in the title challenge, they are definitely in the title challenge. What I wouldn't do is perhaps uh, have... Um, Oh, Leicester have beaten Newcastle too, and okay. I mean that doesn't really help my cause, does it? I mean because I had this guy as my defender, this James Justin, and yeah, and he also got a yellow card. That idiot. Okay, so that sucks. Um, okay. I mean, enough of my fantasy Premier League talk. The point that I was trying to make is there are at least four teams who are in the title challenge. I wouldn't add Chelsea to the mix, even though they are still only a few points away from the top, simply because I don't think they have the team to have the consistency to win the league. Perhaps top four if any of the others don't really play well, but 
I don't see uh, Chelsea winning the league. I think Spurs have a very good chance because of Kane and Son. I think City have a very good chance because of just the way they play. Uh, and you know, there are just a couple of players are getting into form away from actually running away with the league, if you could even say that, because you know they have about 24 games left in the league and they could easily win 20 of them and you know get about 65 points from or 62 63 points from those 24 games that they have to play and if they do do that then they, they are definitely going to win the league if they do do that so yeah um that's all for this video i don't really know what else to talk about um i am going to make a video on the india versus australia test series that is happening the next game of which is starting on 7th if i'm not mistaken uh i i will start uploading reaction videos quite soon few days just give me a few days and i'll start doing that i also made a brief plan on the set of videos that I'll be, that I will be reacting to because in a week's not in a week's time but in a couple of weeks time uh, there's Wonder Vision that is coming up and you know after Wonder Vision few months later a couple of months later there's obviously going to be the other TV series that Marvel has to release there is Loki there is Falcon and the Winter Soldier there is Hawkeye I'm not sure when what is coming but I do know that they are in the releasing stages. And there's obviously the Marvel movies. So Marvel is going to be one of the things that I will be doing, obviously. And so, yeah, apart from that, obviously, Stranger Things and Dark, I'll finish them and probably have something else also in the workings. I don't know what. So that's that. Um, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, I don't think I'll be making this into a podcast because I'm not interested. I just didn't make this as a podcast. So... I never had that in my mind, uh, but I will be coming up with my podcast, some interesting topic, whatever. And yeah, so that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and comment because your comments are really helpful. So please do do that and share the content because if you do like it, then, you know, share it so that other people can watch it and that will also help my channel. So. That's all. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.